Good morning. It's a new day at Daddy Jeep Garage. Today, we tear down the 07 Sterling 10 and a half. Before we get started, I mean this thing's in really good shape. Um, this actually came off the same truck that the Dana 60 did, um, but uh, brand new rotors. They've been sitting for a little bit, they got a little surface rust, but new rotors, calipers, both sides. Uh, looks like the brake lines were replaced, which doesn't really matter because we're getting rid of those. Going to have new ones in, but I mean really a good start jump off point you know uh, i'm pretty happy with this so let's get into it So when you get to this part, you got to take this whole hub assembly off. Uh, you're going to need a specialized tool. All right, you can kind of see these four notches: one, two, three, four. Okay, there's a special tool that goes into this. Um, it is uh, whether it's an axle nut socket, the uh, wheel bearing socket. Uh, whatever it is I got this one two and three quarter got this one at uh, advanced auto parts it's w83008 all right and this guy goes around the inside of here and locks into there easy peasy break it loose break it loose whole hub comes off when you get that hub off make sure you firmly uh, drop your bearing in the cat litter so you can save that for later and Then you'll have something that came off like this All right, you got your axle nut you got your cat litter bearing And you got one more bearing All that's left is this oh, I got these bolts loose Everything attached to those four bolts comes right off and you're done There's also a seal right here that uh, is right in front of the emergency brake, parking brake assembly. Uh, I use the parking brake assembly to kind of slide hammer it off. Be sure to drop that seal in your cat litter as well. Just a note, when you get to the driver's side, um, the axle nut is righty loosey, lefty tighty. Okay, so we got everything off the axle. All the brakes and parking brakes and hubs and everything done okay so i pop the cover start getting the gears out looks like something went horribly wrong in a past life that should not be like that that's the pinion slamming into the carrier so that's nice I wonder if these are uh, replacement gears. Unlike the Dana 60, uh, these bearing caps do not have any kind of marking to let you know where they are on the housing, whether it's left or right. Uh, what I did find was this one has a 52 and the passenger side has a 59 so I could make a cutout but I'm lazy so what I did was sharpie on here in the bottom half of the axle where the 59 goes I oriented it and wrote 59 a couple times over here 52 I wrote it in the correct orientation so it'll line up uh, the way it was originally I also have this video to go back on to so if the Sharpie comes off, I still have the records of it. 
boy this axle just keeps getting better and better uh, I was thinking that uh, when I first started this this truck was pretty well maintained because it had new brakes and and new rotors and maybe even the diff fluid might have been changed but between all the water in it this uh, this messed up LSD that could be normal I guess um, I've heard that it's that it, it happens I mean the, the pinion doesn't look to be damaged down there so I don't see any pinion issues but I took the caps off and these bearings look scorn there's some ridges on it here like they uh, spun this one looks burned I don't know didn't look like that in the d60 maybe this is more normal because it gets more use but I don't know doesn't look great I'm glad we're throwing it all out all right we got a clean housing except for uh, you know the chocolate milk we gotta get out of uh, it definitely looks like those bearings spun believe it or not that, that really stinks um, I'm not feeling any kind of roughness luckily you see all the scores I don't feel anything against those so hopefully it's just a burn and not not like we lost uh, material same with over here um, it looks bad but it feels okay um, regardless this isn't gonna be a high-speed guy anymore I mean this is gonna be 10 miles an hour tops who knows maybe 20 but uh, I can't imagine this being a real problem for my situation let's cut some brackets off shall we Tech rear truss for the Sterling ten and a half. This thing is certainly beefy. Holy crap! Actually, it lines up really, really nice. Really, really good. The only thing we're really finding we have to look into is how this uh, T fitting for your brakes works. Not sure exactly what we need to do to address that. It's also the vent for this axle, correct? Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the vent. Did. A lot of guys will put. I've seen a few guys put a vent on this side of the, uh, right, the diff, diff cover. Diff cover, yeah. Right. Um, but it'll blow a lot of oil right out of it. Um, so instead of a vent, they use a bellow. So it ex a bellow would expand. Sure. But it's still sealed. So as the diff fluid heats up, it'll expand, but it never actually leaves the diff technically. So. Um, I don't know if they cover that up, block it off, or if they reuse it. It'd be nice to have access to that because you, you know, it'd be a nice place to tee into your brake lines. You know, I mean that's the way it was meant. Tucked up on top of the axle, would never get hit. Maybe we should so. look at the instructions. No. No. Oh, okay. No. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Thank you. 
probably should explain this a little more. I'm just using this weld through primer on the inside of the truss just to help prevent corrosion. It does have zinc in it, so it's gonna it's gonna help prevent rusting inside, uh, much like the stainless inside of the steel it uh, primer does. I did opt to use whatever steel I had left on the axle uh, because I know how it welds. So welding the inside of the truss can be tough anyway because it is so narrow. I mean, this guy is what? About an inch wide. So I'm not going to get into many places. I'll be able to get into all these half moons but and up inside of where the pumpkin is. But as far as this deep area, I'm not getting a gun down in there to, to weld. So um, just protect that from corrosion and then use what I know on the axle. So when I weld on the tubes and the housing, I've already been there. I've already tried it and I know it's going to work. So the verdict on this uh, weld through primer isn't great. That's good. That just broke. <laughs> did you hear that pop? I did. <laughs> right on camera too. Um, I'm not really thrilled with it. I, not a great welder, but this stuff isn't helping. All right. I mean, I got some decent stuff here, but. I mean, I got some junky stuff too, like just not pretty. So, uh, my verdict is don't buy it if you're a shade tree welder like me. So after careful evaluation and looking at these welds and this weld, these are tacks, but that weld through primer really gave me a tough time and I would not recommend it um, unless you are just looking to play around with it. You know, I did some vertical welds here and those look really nice. There's no primer there, you know. So anywhere I had, I had put primer, this 3M product, it was not very user friendly. So, um, which is kind of good. You know, it, uh, it validates that, uh, guys, I'm trying to freaking film. <laughs> so it validates that the, you know, the steel is actually a little more user friendly. Um, I didn't notice a difference when I used the steel it on the axles. Uh, whereas this weld through primer, it spit, it's, sp it spattered. There was a lot of blowback and it just, it, it wasn't very helpful. Plus, to add that there's zinc inside of it, I don't know. You're not supposed to weld galvanize, and galvanizing is zinc. So, I wouldn't recommend it. Sorry, guys. I'm not much of a storyteller. I, uh... I'm welding the truss to the axle, but I'd also like to tell you about this fancy coverall I'm sporting. This uh, comes direct from Tractor Supply. My loving wife got it for me because I come home a disaster every time I'm here. And uh, she said I can, uh, she gave me a coat hanger and said, when I'm done, hang it up here and then go home. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. It's pretty great, it's got a hundred pockets, we got speed holes for, I guess these are vent holes. Speed holes down here, zips right up in case you get too hot. She's insulated, love it. Thanks babe, love you. So yeah, uh, a lot of movement in this bad boy. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do a lot of crouching. Crouching is the, is a limiting factor I would say. So, so crouching stays to a minimum, but all in all, extra mobility check out the kicks pretty good pretty good so all right let's get back to welding time to preheat the housing so i can weld it to the truss just like last time you need a form of heat you need a temp gun you need a needle scaler or a chipping hammer or something to push that weld into the cast 
and then a welding blanket to wrap it all up so it doesn't crack and cool slowly. Again, you're gonna you're gonna preheat, weld, post heat, and then wrap it in a blanket so it cools slowly. It's gonna take all night, so be the last thing you do. I'm going to reheat it to 400 again. Then I'm going to grab my fiberglass blanket and wrap it up like a baby's bottle. And here it is, all unwrapped. Uh, thanks for watching guys. We're getting near the end. I'm excited uh, This truss is on welded up. We're one step closer to getting the Jeep in here and parking it for a long time. So uh, With that, please uh, like subscribe and share and we'll see you next time. Thanks <laughs>